Hello, my name is Keith Simpson. I just want to talk to you in this short video about some of the features of Merlin, particularly the uh, nature and behaviour of the gas inlet port. The reason the, the gas inlet port appears to cause some, some sort of confusion is, I think, understanding what the gas inlet port does. So what I'm just going to do now is look at the gas inlet port and explain how it behaves during normal operation of the machine. So I've got the machine set up here to ventilate a, a small dog and we put it to run then it pushes gas in, we're getting a pressure of about 12 centimetres. We see the airway pressure go up here. We've got an airway pressure on the screen of 12. We see the animal just breathing slightly. That's normal operation. And what Merlin is doing is taking in gas through the gas in port, filling up the cylinder, using that gas to deliver it to the patient. At the end of the breath, it's been voided out through the gas out port. So very, very simple operation. But there's some two subtle things that are happening while, while that's going on. <clears throat> uh, one is that during the expiratory phase, when the piston is coming back and filling up the gas, it's taking gas in through that port. The second thing is, when it's delivering gas to the patient during the inspiratory phase, it closes that gas port off so that none of the fresh gas from the anaesthetic machine is added to the tidal volume being delivered to the patient. <coughs> Otherwise, we'd have a very nice, sophisticated machine delivering exactly 480 mils to our patient, but we wouldn't know how much has been added by the incoming fresh gas. So that process of decoupling that gas from the incoming um, fresh gas flow. It's quite a common thing in, in modern ventilators and we do it here in Merlin. So we have a period then when the, the gas inlet is actually closed off and that has implications if we're feeding it from the fresh gas outlet of an anaesthetic machine. So I just want to show you um, what will happen if we, in the first instance, prevent Merlin from filling up with gas in the expiratory phase. So I'm going to put my hand over this gas in port just to clude it and see what happens. And I suspect we're going to find we get a, a nasty gas inlet blocked message. Okay, so we heard inspiration was normal, <clears throat> expiration started. Because my hand was over the gas in, it couldn't take in gas to fill up the, the chamber. And that's, that's a condition that Merlin can't cope with at all. So we've got this persistent alarm, inlet blocked on the screen. And until I reset it, it won't um, release. Now it goes on doing what it was doing before. So. Merlin very much does need gas to be coming in that port, um, but at the same time, as I say, it's going to cut it off. So I'm just going to turn that off, and I'm going to feed some fresh gas direct from the fresh gas flow from the anaesthetic machine in here. It's a non-rebreathing system, so I'm going to put the fresh gas flow quite high. I'm just going to set this running. So we get our rise in pressure, and you see this, this tubing is now as inspiration is going on, this tubing has been pressurised because the gas has been stopped here. This is having some very nasty effects. If we look at our flow meter here, it's been suppressed. And then when that valve is open, it's jumping up. Even worse, the pressure on the screen here, we see the pressure rising. And then at the point where it's released, this pressure has been released back into the patient circuit and it's going extremely high. If we take one step further back, we can see our patient is having a nice inspiration and at the end of inspiration is then getting a real burst of pressure. So this is a very good demonstration, a very graphic demonstration of why we can't just feed the fresh gas flow from the anaesthetic machine into the gas inlet of Merlin. So what do we do? Well, we're going to need some sort of reservoir, aren't we? Because if we put a reservoir in there to allow the gas to fill up in between breaths, then that'll alleviate the problem. So let's try that. Let's try putting um, a reservoir bag just on an angled outlet here, in there. So there's our bag that will now fill up. And this is just for overspill. Should that bag fill up and have nowhere to go, then it will just overspill and that will be taken to, to um, scavenge. What happens now? So now everything's controlled again. We have a nice, nice rise in pressure, no sudden burst in pressure. We see this tube isn't being pressurized at all because the, the excess gas is being taken up by the reservoir bag here. So one important point to note is that this reservoir bag is not a patient reservoir bag, it's a fresh gas flow reservoir bag. So it didn't relate to the patient size, it just relates to how much it needs to fill to allow Merlin to fill up again. And because Merlin's just under a litre, a uh, one litre, two litre bag is fine. So this solves the problem um, for us for a non-rebreathing circuit. We need to have this here. Do bear in mind that 
doesn't have to be here. We can have the same result by having this connected at the, at the anaesthetic machine. So we could put it like that and feed that to our, our machine and have exactly the same result. So that's a non-rebreathing setup. When we come to a rebreathing setup such as this, then I think you'd be forgiven for thinking, great, there's a reservoir bag on here, we can use that. So let's just set this one up. Got our bag on there, and we'll, we'll use the fresh gas flow from the inspiratory limb to feed the gas inlet. Okay, so there we are, we have that set up. So we're just gonna now run this system and see how it behaves. Let's just turn on the ventilator and see what happens. <coughs> so things aren't quite as we might have hoped. We seem to have the same sort of situation going on as before. This tube is definitely getting pressurized. The flow meter bobbin is definitely jumping and we've definitely got a lot of pressure changes going on here. So we've got a massive pressure spike here right up to 57 centimeters water that's as high as it'll go on the machine and we've seen the same sort of spike of pressure being fed down to the patient so this is exactly what we don't want so why is this happening because the this the burton cycloflow system does have a bag on it and it certainly does but the big point is the bag is in this configuration not where it can relieve the pressure from this part of the circuit so we have to be very careful when we use a circle system to make sure that the the Excess gas flow coming from the fresh gas outlet when this gas this valve is closed can be taken up by the reservoir bag And it's not in this case. So as it stands the current cycle flow system is not suitable for direct use with the Merlin ventilator So I say not as it stands and currently because <clears throat> we are working on producing a version of the cycle flow Which will enable you to just do this connection directly and that will be um, available very shortly but I want to just take this one step further and, and show you two more things. One is, how, do we, how does it work with a, um, a circle that has the, the bag on the inspiratory side? And how do we test for uh, an appropriate system? So let's just swap this very quickly. put a very simple um, disposable breathing circuit on here and then connect this one. So as we were before, we've got our same flow as before into that system, put this running and everything's fine because the bag is now in a position to take up the excess flow when Merlin closes this valve off. So how do you tell the difference between the two? Well, there's a very, very simple test you can do. Um, I'm just gonna stop Merlin now. So how do we perform these tests? Well, as I said, they're very simple to do. So let's just look at the, the sort of uh, disposable circuit here, the circle we got here. Um, we got a fresh gas flow coming in. All we need to do is occlude the, what is the inspiratory uh, port of the circle and see whether the reservoir bag fills up. So I'm gonna put my ball of my thumb, um, hand over that. And yes, we can see the bags filling up. And we know this one works because we showed it just now, so we're happy with this. But this is what indeed you do. And then if we empty that bag and occlude it, it just starts to fill back up. And there's no pressure. If I um, occlude and release, there's no release of pressure. So very, very simple. This is uh, suitable for use. So let's just pop that one off there. And let's try the cycle flow, which we believe is going to be unsuitable. So again, it's clearly marked here, inspiratory, ex expiratory. So let's put um, occlusion over the inspiratory port. Okay, and I've got a lot of pressure building up here. So this is unsuitable. Even though I occlude the, the fresh gas flow port or the inspiratory port, the fresh gas got nowhere to go, building up pressure. And we're going to big pressure and nothing's going into the bag. And it's purely the design of the, uh, of the circle. It doesn't make it any better or worse than the other one. It's just a different design. So there's a very simple test. Set your flow meter to two liters or so, occlude the inspiratory port, see whether the pressure builds up. If it does, you can't use it. Okay, and that's it. Thank you for watching, and we'll have another video for you soon.